The migrant crisis in Massachusetts seems to be getting worse before it can get better. Governor Maura Healey has now deployed hundreds of National Guard members to help emergency shelters handle the overwhelming influx of families who need a place to stay. Cities and towns are struggling to find places to house the migrants coming into their communities, which they're legally required to do by the state's Right to Shelter Act. Now, as GBH News' Sarah Betancourt reports, some cities and towns are calling on the state to do more. Sarah joins me now to discuss, as does Emanuela Rene, the coordinator for the Association for Haitian Women in Boston's Task Force for Newly Arrived Haitians. Haitians make up a majority of the population of migrants coming into Massachusetts. Emanuela, Sarah, thank you so much for being here today to walk through this. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. And Sarah, I want to start by talking about some of the, the reporting you've done recently. You reached out to, what, something like three dozen towns and cities to hear from officials there about what they're experiencing. What, what are some of the themes you heard in those conversations? So it was about 40 mayors and municipal leaders. Um, the overwhelming sense that I got from them was it was really threefold. One, we want to be welcoming to new arrivals, new immigrants. Two, we feel like there hasn't been enough communication from the state on who's coming, when they're coming. And third, that there's not enough support, enough resources to help them. Um, and those were like the three things they really wanted to address in their interviews. Yeah, and, and one of the mayors you talked to, I think, referenced the the flights that uh, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis sent up here. We're coming up the one-year anniversary, or we are just at the one-year anniversary of those those migrants arriving on Martha's Vineyard as part of that trip. Do you feel that the, or how do you see, or what's different about, you know, that that high-profile situation and, and what's happening now with the state sending uh, people into these communities? I mean, the similarity is that there's the element of surprise and little communication. However, what Governor Ron DeSantis did was a political stunt using people's lives, sending them somewhere where they did not know they were going. Whereas what the state is doing under the required 1983 right to shelter law is sending people to communities in um, hotels that are state contracted and having them stay there until they can figure out what's next for them. So it's, it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, but some mayors and town managers felt the similarities were significant. And we should note that right to shelter law, too. It's about families, right? So these are right. people with children, uh, pregnancies, so not yeah. just... And with the 6,800 families that are in um, shelters right now in Massachusetts, about a third-ish are in hotels that are state contracted. But a lot of them are unhoused residents and migrant families. So that's an important delineation to make. Right. It's happening while we already have a housing crisis in the state. Emanuela, I'd love to, to hear from you about what, what kind of work your organization is doing and, and what you're seeing on the ground. Right. So um, the Association of Haitian Women has long had a history of helping um, Haitian immigrants in Boston. And so we found that it was our responsibility to help the newly arrived Haitian community um, find their footing and get resources. So we coordinated a um, task force for newly arrived Haitians. Um, it has, um, it's made up of eight committees, um, including social services, healthcare, um, mental health, education, and so on. And we're really working to set up a system where um, newly arrivals can get um, the resources that they need to um, live fulfilling and dignified lives in Massachusetts. So, so what does that look like? What kind of services and, and supports do people need when they get here? Um, they need the same supports um, that people who live here have. Um, so they need access to um, work. They need, their kids need school. Um, they need access to food. Um, they need essentially the same basic human rights that um, other citizens of the United States have. So we try to, um, right now, um, like mentioned, um, the migrants are staying in shelters. So we're trying to reach out to these shelters and see what they need um, and how they can be better supported. Um, I've had the opportunity to visit one of these shelters in Framingham and tell them that the National Guard is now coming to um, 
assist in um, finding them transportation and food um, and they will not be armed. So I made sure to tell them that. Um, and one of the main issues that we have there is um, a lack of transport, a lack, sorry, a lack of translation and interpretation for these Haitian migrants, like lack of um, culturally competent care. So we're kind of addressing the issues as they come up, because like uh, mentioned, this is extremely unprecedented and poorly prepared for. Right. Now let's talk about the, the National Guard for a second. That's one of the things Governor Healy has done. She's sending them out to, to shelters where there aren't service providers already contracted. Sarah, what other kinds of things is the, the state doing to handle this? So the National Guard members are going to about three dozen uh, state contracted hotels that don't have the service providers. And what service providers typically do there is help enroll with mass health, um, provide basic food and needs. A lot of the women have uh, young children, are pregnant, so having diapers and other necessities like that readily available. They help with enrollment in schools, local school districts, which is a pretty significant thing for a lot of these small towns. Um, it's pretty, it pretty much runs the gamut, helping them find long-term housing. Worcester's doing that right now, and service providers in the hotels there. Um, it really ranges. Yeah, so there's a lot being done at, I guess, kind of the, the state level, the local level, the, the non-governmental level. For the, the states and the cities, that, you know, the state and the cities that are hosting new arrivals now, what what is the price tag on all of this, Sarah? It, it ranges pretty significantly. A lot of people told me, I, I don't really know what the price tag is yet because often they haven't known when people are arriving. Like in Norton, for instance, the town manager there said, I wasn't aware that there were more unhoused families and migrant families coming here until my clerk got three birth certificate requests for that hotel. And then I did a little digging and figured it out. And from there, he was able to put together a coalition and figure out like, oh, how can local community members and town members assist? But that it's all sort of in the preliminary stages. Something that did pop up a lot in interviews was something I had never thought of. Room taxes for shelters and hotels. Usually hotels give a room tax to the municipality, but because there's a state contract and these hotels are almost entirely going to unhoused families, a lot of the town managers are like, well, we're not getting the room tax now. The state counters that, but it's still all in the works. They're hoping for reimbursement, and they just want to make sure that some of the funds they were typically getting from hotels still come to support municipalities. Right, and Governor Healy is seeking uh, some more money from the state legislature to help defray this as well. Yes, and she and uh, Boston Mayor Wu were able to get about $2 million back in August as well to so support the crisis, specifically for housing and EA shelters. Okay, so there's a there's a lot of different pieces here and components of the whole things and, and things to watch as it goes forward and certainly work being done uh, outside of government as well, right? Um, you must all have your hands full. Yeah, it is um, extremely exhaustive. And we're seeing a lot of um, social yeah. services getting the, bearing the weight of it all. Um, however, um, it is work that needs to be done now that these um, families have arrived here. So um, we're at AFI, we are happy to serve our Haitian community. All right, Emanuela, Sarah, thank you so much for talking about this with me. And we hope to hear from you again.